welcome to Crufts 2012, the world's biggest dog show. Over the next four days, we're going to see more than 21,000 dogs competing from 39 different countries. At the end of it all, we'll just have seven dogs competing in the arena on Sunday night, where judge Frank Kane will choose the ultimate winner, best in show. My name is Marina Scott and welcome to Around the Dog World. The first day of Crufts 2012 is Toy and Utility Day and there's already some excitement brewing around the rings and Andrew Brace and I went to take a look at breed judging. So we've moved over to ring number 11 for the judging of toy poodles. Peter Young yep, today yep. is judging these. It's another big crowd round here. Yep, yep. They've all flocked to the toy poodles. I don't know whether they've come to see Graham, one of our top winning dogs of all breeds last year, who's moving out there now, fucking splendidly. And of course or I whether found... they came to see the Japanese bitch. And the Japanese bitch won a big open bitch class, but she didn't win the CC. The CC went to this young bitch. Road Rage being shown by Lisa Croft Elliott. And now round they're going for best to breed. There's Lee Cox with Graham going out in front. Lisa Croft Elliott with Road Rage, the younger bitch. And Lee's got best to breed with Graham. And it's a very, very popular win, judging by the ringside reaction. Well, we'll see Vanatonia, you'll see in the group later. Champion Zentar Elizabeth, seven years old, and Margaret Anderson taking the group. And the case on the second. And the accuser's going to get group three. Graham bouncing his way into group four. So Simon, we've just seen the utility group winners. Uh, this year was judged by Jeff Corrish, who's used to being on the other end of the lead, I suppose. Um, what did you make of his group? From the ringside, it looked, looked a, a, a super group in his shortlist, I thought, thought looked, looked fantastic. I don't think there was any, any great surprise at his winner was the beautiful Lazar Apso champion Zentar Elizabeth, owned by Margaret Anderson, a great favourite of many people. And group two was a Kazand, which we don't yeah. often see that breed, perhaps up in the top group placings very often. Back in the 1950s, is there was a, a case on bitch one, one best in show at Crafts. This one, uh, American and UK champion, Kimont Skyline Game Boy, he arrived in Britain and immediately started a wonderful run in the breed. I, I kept seeing him in the, in the group ring at show after show. And a very successful kennel was in group three. Indeed, champion Redwich Leather and Lace, the kennel of uh, Dave and Jelly Killily and Arlene Clure. They got reserved best in show at Crafts with their beautiful Dancing in the Dark many years ago. Uh, group four was the Toy Poodle, which we did actually see earlier in the programme. Yes. Graham. Yes, yeah, this is the dog who last year came out and won three best in shows three weeks running and has been a, a grand representative for his breed, always puts up a real gassy little performance for such a small dog. Oh, it's going to the pot. Pomeranian. Well, it gave some performance there. This is a five-year-old dog called Dreamer. And the pug is getting the group two. Group three the goes to the Bichon Frise. Michael Code with champion Pamplona bring me sunshine. And finally, it's the Pomeranian. So the toy group winner was the Pomeranian. Yeah, it's strange. When, when, when the Pom came in the ring, I thought, oh, I think I know, know that handler. And then I looked again in the catalogue. Oh, yes, it was uh, Mickey Nilsson. Ten years ago, he came over to Crafts the very first time that uh, pet passport dogs could make a big impact. God, did he make an impact with that wonderful standard poodle, King, who went all the way to best in show and, and showed how international it could be. And there he was back again ten years later with a Pomeranian, bred in, in Ireland in the very successful kennel of uh, Bet Belliver. The dog's name is Belliver Unexpected Dream, which I think was very apt because it was a dog that none of us knew of even. So in yeah. group two yeah. was the Pug. This is champ champion Pugalicious Provocateur, which I think is a fabulous <laughs> name. Uh, he's been doing extremely well in the breed during the, during the past year. And there was a very well-known dog in group three there, oh, doing yes, very yes, well yes, again. Yes. Eric the Bichon. Yes, top dog all breeds last year, champion Pam 
I'm playing a Bring Me Sunshine, Michael Cohn's Bichon Frise, great ringside favourite for the last couple of years. But in Group 4 was the Papillon, and this has an interesting background, actually. Yeah, there's a British bred dog called Leopard Fly Me To Farley Spain. I remember seeing this, this dog in the breed rings a couple of years ago and thinking, gosh, that, that, that looks exciting. And he soon became a British champion. And then before we knew it, he was over in America, where he's been campaigned very successfully and I think was one of the British dogs to win uh, uh, their breed at the recent Top Westminster show in America. But now let's go over to meet the judges, Jeff and Annette. And so your winner you picked as champion Zentar Elizabeth. I did. Beautiful specimen of the breed from what we could see. She's lovely. I, I judged the breed here last year and, and she was my best to breed. And she went group two. And she's a favourite of mine. But you know, you judge every show differently. And when Elizabeth went round, she just carries herself so beautifully. She moves the way Apsos should move. They have to have a jaunty movement. Beautiful head carriage. The winner was easy. I had a difficult choice then between second, third, fourth. What were your initial thoughts when all those toy breeds walked into the ring? What am I going to do? Because <laughs> <laughs> the, um, they were lovely. They, they, it just is a very strong group at the moment anyway. Even in the cut, I didn't get in all my favourites and I brought in nine. I just, I thought the pom was exquisite, really exquisite. It was a delight, it really was. So Andrew, we're down by ring number one in hall number one where the Irish Water Spaniels are being judged and we've got the bitch ticket and the dog ticket in the ring and uh, there's a bit of significance between the two? Absolutely Marina Merlin, the male, we've had him on quite a few programmes in the past. He was the country's top winning gun dog this year. The bitch CC has just been won by his little sister Claire. It's going to be a nail-biting finish, I think. Irish waters have attracted quite a ringside today. So has Claire been on British soil before? No, no, first trip. She's been based in Scandinavia, and I think they're going round. So they're about to they're send them round, and the crowd and the, are joining in. Oh, my God, yeah the, <laughs> yeah. the ringside's really getting involved in this. Here come the awards out. Yeah, the awards are out there. Oh, and it's going to be Merlin! And it's Merlin. <laughs> it's Merlin just ahead of his little sister, Judith Carruthers. Judith looks, Judith looks really overwhelmed. Yeah, she does. Do you know how many tickets that is for Merlin now? Um, I've lost count. <laughs> well, that says it all. Merlin's going into the group later on. You know, he liked it, so did the crowd, it and that's where he's Irish going. Yes, yeah, it sure is. Fantastic win for the breed, and such a glorious performance from this dog tonight. Merlin, two, two years old, with Judith Carruthers. And into group two goes the yellow Labrador, and by the English Springer Spaniel, who did put in such a wonderful performance this evening, so good on the move. And group four to the wonderful, graceful curves of that lovely pointer. So the winner of the Gundog group was Merlin, the Irish Water Spaniel, who we saw in the breed earlier, Andrew. What a way to have his first crafts. Yes, yes, he's had a remarkable year, hasn't he? Because he, he didn't arrive until um, a month or so after last year's crafts. And Merlin was one of four top places in the Gundor group who mm -hmm. were from abroad. Yeah, John Thirlwell's four place winners were the American Irish Water Spaniel, the American Labrador Retriever, Salty Dog, who of course we featured in a previous programme. Third was um, an English Springer who I believe is Swedish bred. Fourth was the Pointer, um, almost a veteran bred in New Zealand, campaigned in Australia and has been for the last year or so in the UK where he's, where he's finished his UK title. Well, Andrew actually caught up with John Thurwell, the Gundog Group judge. What makes this dog a great dog? Okay, well, yes, as you say, I've seen the dog and admired him greatly from the ring I'd never actually had my hands on them until yesterday, that was the first time. Under the coat, he's constructed really well. He's a good moving dog, has breed points, um, but he also has the character of a water spaniel. And he has personality, which I think gets him to the top. So we're ringside at the GSD ring. Ring number nine, Jim Parody is uh, about to assess the Bitch Challenge Certificate winner and the Dog Challenge Certificate winner in the GSDs. We've got Elmo here at the front, handled by Steve Cox, a very well-known dog. 
and a Swedish bitch behind. Of course, uh, Elmo was last year's best of breed and group one winner of the pastoral group. What is the judge going to do? Oh, it goes to Elmo. He takes it for the second year running. Elmo is best of breed at Crafts. So Elmo goes for his lap of honour. Steve Cox handling. Oh, but he's let go of the lead and Elmo's going for a little walk of himself. Oh, how wonderful. There we go. It's a lovely shot there of Elmo in his show pose. He goes forward to the pastoral group as best of breed winner. Yes! Oh, I'm delighted about that. Absolutely delighted. The Newfoundland Brutus, this lovely dog. Sonia, welcome. And they've had a great reward. The Siberian Husky is Solar. This two and a half year old dog. The boxer gets group three. The seven year old Max. And the Tibetan Master gets group four. This is Yogi, eight years old. So, Jeff Luscott's winner of the working group was the Newfoundland. Andrew, this is a big winner abroad yet again. Yes, the foreigners invade once again. If you actually look in the Crufts catalogue, Marina, I think you'll find that this dog's entry runs to something like six or seven lines. Really? Um, I think the dog himself has something like 11 or 12 titles in various countries all over Europe. Oh, it looked like a big popular win. Well, the Siberian Husky was group Completely two. Completely new to me. Completely yeah. new to me, but looked very, very impressive. I believe it's got four CCs, all with best of breed, mm -hmm. and was a finalist in the Kennel Club Junior Warrant Finals on mm -hmm. Friday as well. Mm -hmm. So in Group 3, we had another big winner, um, a, a British winner, Max. Max. Crafts veteran, boxer, um, trying to win his third Crafts group, can you believe? I was actually at the, um, the boxer event just last week. Max won the Dog of the Year title for the fifth consecutive year, can oh, you wow. believe? And a Tibetan Mastiff was Group 4. A breed that doesn't even have challenge certificates. Yeah. Well, let's hear from Jeff Luscott, the working group judge. And so if you could just talk about your winner, the Newfoundland. Stunning dog, um, just the size, the substance, the bone, the head, um, the handling the skills of the, of the girl who just presented him, both in condition and with... <sighs> the right movement, the right pace for the dog, so the dog didn't look exaggerated, the dog moved and could do the job. You know, I would want to be rescued by him, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving it to the Old English. The Old English Sheepdog has got the nod. This is Jimmy, two, paparazzi, this uh, two-year-old dog. Oh, I beg your pardon, it's the beardy. What a silly mistake, Peter. And the German Shepherd gets group three. And the Border Collie. I looked down as soon as I thought Albert... So, the old English sheepdog becomes the third overseas visitor to get into the Best in Show lineup. Now, Andrew, what did you make of this one, then? I thought Albert had um, an, an incredibly strong shortlist. Uh, and, and I was glad it was a decision that I didn't have to make because uh, the bearded collie, Indiana Jones, who was my Manchester Best in Show winner last year, I thought he looked better actually uh, yesterday than, than he did when I gave him Best in Show. Uh, then Elmo the German Shepherd, you know, I, I am a great fan of this dog. Uh, we watched him uh, win Best of Breed where, again, he was a hugely popular winner. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the... Um, the Border Collie, another Best in Show winner. Um, father of your babies, Marina. <laughs> he is, so he's a bit of a Not favourite literally. of mine. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and, and then you come to the Old English. He's, he's, he's been brought over here and shown selectively. He's got his UK title. Um, a very well-advertised dog, well-travelled, and um, comes from Hungary. Right. So we're at ring number 31, where the PBGVs are being judged. That's otherwise known as Petit Pasic Griffon Von Dion. Andrew Brace and I are watching some of the judging. There's a lot of excitement building, because there's one particular special dog that may be coming into the rings. 
Yes, there certainly seems to be a swelling ringside because everyone's looked in their catalogue and realised that Jilly, who first appeared on the public scene by winning Reserve Best in Show at Crafts last year when she was not even a champion, just plain little peekaboo. <laughs> and now she's Jilly, everyone's sweetheart. So, Andrew, I'm just see uh, Jilly having a bit of fun over the, by the ringside as the judging is continuing. Well, yeah, you know, dogs, they need to, to relax and, and have that fun. You know, you can't keep them sort of on the ball constantly. And she's one of those dogs, you know, she wants to play with everybody and jump on everybody's lap. Gavin's wife is over watching ringside, looking a little nervous. Jilly took the ticket and now she's back in the ring. Let's see who gets this. Andrew, do you know much about the Dog CC winner? I know a little bit about the Dog CC winner. That is another one uh, bred by Gavin and Sarah, but owned by the Blances, who of course in previous years were terribly successful with, with their penalty of Pembroke Welsh Corgis. I think he's called Duck and Dive, this dog. Oh yes, that rings a bell. <laughs> and now Jilly's giving us one more up and down, or as the Americans would say, another out and back. Out and back, I like that. You know, uh, Gavin was telling me leading up to this that he was putting in so much walking and exercise yeah, with road Jilly. work, Road work really counts, you know, when you're conditioning a show dog. It gives them that hardness. So the ring's clapping for them as they're going around. It's hard not to join in, isn't it? I know, Andrew? no, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you get carried away with it, for heaven's sake. I mean, it's, it's so The Stuart's handing over the rosette now to Zola, who's going to make her choice for best of breed, going through to and, the hand well, group. Well, I think it's going to be the bitch. I think... It's yeah. going to be Gavin! <laughs> Jilly has won through to the hound group, last year's reserve best in show winner. <laughs> And Gavin looks absolutely delighted. So, Sarah, Jilly's taken best of breed for two years in a row. Last year, she wasn't even a champion, and but then she went on to take reserve best in show. I mean, how much does it mean to you today? It's just, as you can see, it's just beyond words, really, of the, of the day that it's been. It's been, we've not slept for, like, three nights, and it's just been it's undescribable how we felt over the last week, really, of, of the... The whole thing to do with the show, really. It's just, we're just over the moon. I haven't spoken to Gavin yet, but <laughs> it's just overwhelming, absolutely overwhelming. Well, many congratulations. Thank we'll you. see you in the group later. Thank you very much. So we're now joined by the woman of the hour, I should probably <laughs> say. Gavin, a lot of hard work has gone into this, and there was a lot of pressure on you today, but you've pulled it off. Yeah, there was a bit of pressure. Yeah, she's done so well, and I was... I've worked so hard over the winter, exercising her more than more than ever. I've walked miles with her to make sure she was in tip-top condition. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I was back of nervous on the ad. I don't normally get nervous in the ring, but I was really bad today. So, she doesn't let me down. That's the one thing that was in my favour. She moves fantastic, you know. So. You did look a bit pale, I must admit. Yeah, yeah. I'm usually am pale, but I was white today. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's a showman. He's a, a lovely showman. response from the crowd. He's got it back. Oh, he's giving it to the Norwich. The Norwich Terrier takes it. Paris, 15 month old, this young dog. The Kerry Blue. Chelsea. George, the Dandy Dinmont, gets Group 4. Paolo Dondina, last year's Best in Show judge, gave the nod to the smart 14-month-old Norwich Terrier, Ragus Merry Gentleman, winning his second group but first CC. Group 2 was the Kerry Blue champion, Paris Blue, Kenneth Lane's Chelsea. Group 3 went to a regular on Around the Dog World, the Irish Terrier, champion American champion, Fleet Street Fenway Fan. And fourth in the group, winning his second CC, we have the Dandy Dinmont, Cloverwood Royal George. Now, let's take a look at the winners from the Hound Group. And it's straight in, no messing, the Borzoi. Luke, three years old, and... Second reserve, group two. Reserve best in show last year, now second in the group this year. And the Saluki gets group three. 
Rafi, Luke Johnson, this young man handling in the ring. He's a good handler. And the little miniature Smooth Daxon gets group four. So our final competitor for best in show is the elegant Borzoi, champion Rothsby Shoalwood Snowhawk. First group win for this dog, along with five CCs and three best of breeds. Second in the hound group, and one we saw in the breed ring earlier, Jilly, champion Soul Trader Peekaboo, the Petit Basset Griffon Vendion, last year's reserve best in show winner. And a very popular choice in third was the Saluki, who was winning his third and crowning CC on the day, Georgenjo Merzam of Fernlark, handled by 14-year-old Luke Johnston. And our final group place went to the miniature smooth-haired Dachshund champion Carpaccio, Captain Scarlet. Now we have each of the group winners. We can go and see what Frank Kane awards Thruff's best in show. It's just listening to him as a colleague here with us. And now we have the bonus of being able to watch him enjoying what he does best and what he enjoys most, judging dogs, judging their conformation, looking at their points. Are they the best he's ever seen of that particular breed? How do they compare with the best he's ever seen? He's given it to the last app, so <coughs> Elizabeth. What a lovely reaction from Margaret oh, Anderson. She, she Hand to the mouth. It. <laughs> Margaret Anderson, breeder, handler, owner. The seven-year-old bitch there, Elizabeth. They are best in show. Where are you going for the reserve? Oh, Frank, Frank? looks very pleased with himself. He's going reserve. to the new piece. <laughs> Second time for a new farm oh, being reserve oh, best here. Come on from the teddy bear. <laughs> all the way from Slovakia to take reserve best in show at the greatest dog show in the world. Crofts 2012. Fantastic.